What's going on, everybody? Toddzilla here with Zilla Fantasy Elite for your thirsty Thursday night football game. Going over a Thursday night theory here, folks. So going over the adjusted line play report, step-by-step uh, -step kind of detailing uh, what these numbers mean, how I attack them, and trying to put it into an island game context. So let's just get into it. Thursday night football. First thing we look at, Vegas line. Vegas game total 45 points. Uh, that's pretty middle of the pack these days. Not good, not bad. Dallas, a 25-point uh, team total there because they are five-point road favorites in this particular matchup. 25 points is actually pretty decent for a team total on any given week. And the Giants at 20 uh, for their team implied total. Again, that's based off of this Vegas game total and the Vegas line. So Dallas five-point favorites. Uh, they are the 25-point uh, total, and then that remains to have 20 more points there. So that's kind of what we look at in this section. Right below that, we have their game time. So Dallas game time spent tied. Uh, their rank is 30th, so one of the lower times tied. Game time leading rank 24th, so they're not very good at that. And then game time trailing rank is 28th, so they're... Uh, been trailing quite a bit there, which is unfortunate for them uh, and their uh, fans, probably. And then New York, number two in tied game rank, so they spend a lot of time tied. Uh, they don't spend a lot of time leading at 23. And then game time trailing, they're not trailing a ton, but 18, kind of middle of the pack there in terms of that. And the next thing we do, we usually look at the away team. So that's this section up here, and maybe I can... Uh, zoom in and do some of that uh, for you guys on this particular episode let's see if we can't uh, zoom in a little bit here All right, there we go. Now we are zooming in. So this top section here, Dallas versus the uh, Giants, is the section that we want to look at. So defensive pass and run options here. So looking at this first one, we're looking at the offensive pass protection in general. So we have just this little section here. Let's see if, how far we in we can zoom. So offensive pass protection versus offensive pass DVOA. We see Dallas on offense. They're ranked 13th in offensive pass protection, so a little bit better than average. And then the Giants, number two in defensive pass rush. This is indicative. This is an adjusted sack rate. It's not necessarily a pressure rate, but it's an adjusted sack rate, which means not all sacks are created equal. One that you get on third and 14. Uh, not worth as much in the adjusted sack uh, column as perhaps a sack on second and one where you wouldn't expect the team to be passing. Uh, those are weighted a little bit more heavily. So Giants actually very good at generating sacks, which probably means uh, we might see some pressured throws from Dallas. So typically uh, when we see a bigger mismatch, so number two versus 13, I assume the Giants uh, defensive line will overwhelm the Dallas offensive line in terms of giving up sacks. So the Giants may get a few sacks in this. And a lot of times if it's mismatched like that, I think Dallas is probably going to have to get the ball out a little bit quicker. So that tends to lead to lower A dot throws, which involve the tight end more often, the running backs more often, and then some slot receivers. So CD Lamb does run a lot of slot routes there. I would expect him to see a lot of passes as well as Ferguson uh, with him being back. I think those are the two that you would want to attack in a pass game situation like this. And then looking at offensive line and defensive uh, line pass DVOA. So uh, slightly in the favor here of the Giants. They're middle of the pack at 16. Dallas a little bit below average at 22. This is telling me Dallas isn't going to be very efficient uh, on a play-by-play -play basis with their pass plays. So Really looking at Dallas kind of struggling and low EPA type of situation. So again, probably getting the ball to uh, Ferguson and CeeDee Lamb kind of on shorter routes. Uh, do expect the running backs maybe to get a few additional targets here from Dak. And that's really 
what we're looking at when we look at the offensive line uh, for pass play and versus the defensive line for their pass rush and how they're doing in DVOA. So that's that situation. Then we're going to go over to the run blocking side. So uh, DVOA is kind of a metric compares to everybody else in the season, how they're doing on particular plays. And then the offensive run blocking is basically, hey, if they're getting negative yards, that's probably on the offensive line. If they're you know, getting you know, zero yards on a run or one yard or two yards in certain ranges, um, based off of how good they are on that individual run, not necessarily taking into consideration the down and distance or anything, which DVOA does do. Uh, the offensive run blocking is basically, hey, did you gain two yards on this particular play? If so, kind of get weighted this much versus DVOA is comparing it to others for the season. So on that regard, Dallas number 13 in offensive run blocking, a little bit above average. Giants defensive front at 18. That's pretty close, uh, slightly in the favor of Dallas. So I'd expect them to maybe be able to gain some positive yardage on uh, a decent chunk of their run plays, but then the run DVOA, how are they doing in certain situations? Uh, that's pretty much even up. And then these situations, you know, this isn't too big of a difference, and this one's really close. I usually say studs eat in those scenarios. So if you got somebody that is just better than others on the field, they're probably going to overcome a matchup like this and be pretty successful. Um, if you don't have studs, then they're kind of people that you can ignore for the week. And really, we don't have studs in Dallas. It may be a four-headed monster there now with Zeke and Deuce Vaughn. It sounds like Cook is going to get, Delvin Cook's going to get involved. And you have Rico Dowdle in an island game matchup too. I would avoid all of those players. I don't think they're going to see enough volume to make a difference in this. Uh, Dallas is favored by five points, which um, based off of their offensive uh, report here, not looking super good for them to score points. So that's already sending some alarms for me and, you know, a potential upset for the Giants in this particular matchup. All right, now that we have that underway, let's get to the home team side. So this is going to be Dallas versus the Giants on their pass rush. So really even here, Dallas number 15 in defensive pass rush, Giants actually number 14 in pass protection. Uh, I don't know how accurate. Again, this isn't a pressure rate, but it's how often the quarterback is getting sacked and how often they're getting to the quarterback for sacks. So this is pretty even. Tells me it's going to be a standard day at the office. Uh, Daniel Jones should have an okay amount of time. Again, variation plays into this. I think Dallas does have some studs. If Dallas does get up, they can pin their ears back, and maybe this looks a little bit different. But Giants have been, you know, kind of in a lot of neutral game scripts, and they're sitting right in the middle of the pack. So this tells me uh, Dallas probably not going to be getting home with a ton of sacks, but it's just going to be a standard day at the office. And then the past DVOA, Giants 18, slightly below average. Dallas 12, a little bit above average there. So slight favor of Dallas. I would just expect the Giants not to be you know, super explosive or super efficient on a play-to-play -play basis. Um, based off of this standard day at the office with time to throw, I think the uh, guys that you're going to want to look at, especially in an island game matchup, neighbors is obvious, but then I think you're going to see some targets head to Slayton. I think if he's in there, you're going to see, just let me uh, double check that Slayton's not injured here, but if he's in there, him and Daniel Jones do have a weird connection, so I'd expect... If he's got some standard time, he will try to get the ball to Slayton. Um, Wandell Robinson has also been seeing quite a few targets. So those would be like the three people that I would be uh, semi-interested in here. Just let me double check on Slayton. Yeah, and he looks like he doesn't have any, uh, he's questionable. So uh, looks like he's got a thumb injury. Turned in limited practices Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so um, could be interesting there. He might be really low rostered with that questionable tag, and this is a situation where he could uh, potentially see you know six, seven targets in a game like this. That's close back and forth affair with Daniel Jones getting an adequate amount of time. I think Slayton could see some uh, run if this is a lower scoring affair. Um, any sort of big pop off play could be uh, super good there. Now getting into the run blocking side, we see the Giants 
24th in offensive run blocking. This is red, so that means they're basically in the bottom 10 of the NFL. Uh, fortunately for them, Dallas stopping the run 32, really poor. Giants offensive run DVOA 22, so uh, approaching the red status there. And then Dallas number 32 in defensive run DVOA. So people have just been running all over the uh, Dallas Cowboys. We do have Singletary there who seems to get all of the work. Uh, Tyrone Tracy does also help in that regard, uh, but he doesn't get the volume that you're probably going to need in an island game matchup. Uh, if you're in an ultra deep league, 16 teams, and you need to start 11 players with a bunch of flex spots, I think Tyrone Tracy is startable in a league like that, but not your standard 10, 12, or 8 team leagues. Uh, he probably shouldn't be on your roster even on an 8 team league, but um, that's, I think, how Giants are going to move the ball. This tells me they're going to be very effective uh, running the ball, or at least more effective than they're used to. Their pass game, standard day at the office, while the Cowboys might be under duress a little bit. And then that run game from the Cowboys is kind of an even matchup, but they're without studs. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to play this. I think the Giants can outright win this game. It is at home. They're playing the Cowboys. They seem to be struggling. I'm going to go ahead and say... We see an upset here of the Giants. They at least cover that five-point spread. If you have the ability to go ahead and bet uh, this against the spread, I really like the Giants here. And if you want to place an outright bet that they win, uh, I would be in favor of that too. And then finally, pace of play here. So looking at the left play, uh, top here for the away team, overall place of, pace of play on offense. And then on the right side for the home team is their overall pace of play and offense. The ones that are opposite is how that defense is doing or how the opposing offenses have been going against their defense. Um, when people are uh, leading against the Giants, they are pretty quick. Uh, Dallas, number one overall in pace of play. Uh, they're exactly middle of the pack in offensive neutral situation. So Offensive neutral situation means the game's within eight points. It's in the first, second, or third quarter and outside of the two-minute drill that you would see in the first half. So any of those minutes in the first three quarters outside of the last two minutes of the first half are considered offensive neutral situation when they are within eight points. Uh, Dallas middle of the pack there. When they're leading, they're very quick. If they're going to be leading, looks like uh, Giants, the opponents play quick against them. Uh, offensive pace of play, this should say when it's within seven points. Uh, Dallas is really quick when it's within seven points, irregardless of what quarter it is. And then when trailing by seven plus, they are almost in the top ten. So Dallas does play pretty quick. The Giants' overall pace of play is number eight. They're also eight in neutral situation pace of play. So this tells me you might see a few more plays than you're used to. Um, which could lead to an over of that 45-point score. Um, you're certainly capable of seeing some additional PPR points in a game like this, too. Uh, the Giants, if I expect them to be leading, they are in the top 10 when they're leading by 7+. plus. Um, kind of neutral situation here, offensive pace of play when, when it's in. Within 7 points, they're actually slow, so I'm not sure why the uh, offensive neutral situation is so much different than this if they're just playing... You know fast until that two minutes and then they're really slow in that two minutes and they have the ball in that two minute range but they are one of the slower ones too when trailing by seven plus so kind of interesting stuff there uh keep that in mind it looks like it could be one of a, a quicker paced game than you might otherwise be expecting from the giants so that's gonna do it for the uh Adjusted line play report, the uh, Thursday night theory, if you will. So hopefully you learned a little bit about how we attack this and you can use it and kind of say, hey, based off of all this information that you've been giving me, this is how I see these games play out. These numbers kind of mean this when they're close, when there's a huge gap, it means this. And you can go out and use that to either place prop bets. I don't know uh, off the top of my head any prop bets in this, but... I do like maybe an over on the rushing yards for Devin Singletary based off of this. Uh, maybe a Giants pass rusher for a sack or over a half a sack. Uh, Dak maybe for an interception if he's going to be under pressure, but uh, that one a little less confident on. And then, uh, yeah, things like that. And if you can place bets on the game, I would say bet 
the Giants covering this spread and even bet the Giants actually winning this game outright. So keep that in mind. All right, that's going to do it for the Thursday Night Theory episode. Thanks for watching all the way through here. If you've made it this far, if you have, certainly hit the subscribe button, hit the like for this video. If you're not following me on social medias, it's at Toddzilla1337 or at Zilla Fantasy on Twitter. Have a good one, folks. Hopefully we go out and win some money together. Bye.